On Christmas Day, Dynamo Moscow, one of the most famous ice hockey teams in the world, arrived in the UK to play a three-match tour against the elite of the British game. Let everybody in Britain know that they are one of the best teams in the world and they're certainly not going to give us any quarter. I know they're going to be a really fast team, probably going to be a big team. I, th I think it's going to be one of the, the best teams we're going to see all year. When you're coming up against a team like that, obviously, you know, you, you start thinking, holy smokes. They, they won't have any real weaknesses. They're going to be, they'll be strong in all departments. If I was a nice hockey fan, I would not miss this game. Moscow, home of the Dynamo Sports Club. The notorious Russian winter, with temperatures regularly reaching 40 below zero, has engraved in native Moscovites a deep passion for winter sports. And so where better to spend the day than at one of Moscow's many outdoor ice rinks? At the Norvagost training facility on the outskirts of the city, Dynamo are preparing for their trip. Currently third in the famous Russian Super League, the team consists of many former North American Hockey League players and several Olympic champions. The Russian national side has long drawn much of its talent from Dynamo's ranks, a situation that has led to the club being regarded as the most illustrious in Russia. It's also one of the oldest. Formed in 1946 amidst post-war jubilation of victory in the Great Patriotic War, Dynamo have won the Russian Super League eight times, the Russian Cup four times, and through touring and European competition success, have established themselves as a worldwide institution. The club's current home is the 9,000 all-seat Luzhniki Stadium. Built in 1959, Luzhniki is the center of ice hockey in Moscow, with several of the top clubs sharing the rink. Dynamo regularly attract around 6,000 fans to home games and is the most supported club in the city. Indeed, the club has over 50,000 members, several of whom often come in from the cold. Centre forward Ravil Yakubov is well aware of the history surrounding the club. This is a team with very strong traditions, which has won several national championships and I feel very honored to be a part of it. I feel that at the moment the best players are Andrei Razin and Alexandra Savchenkov, who are both in the national team. Netminder Mikhail Stelenkov played in the NHL for 11 years before returning to the club, who fostered him at a young age. You can see outside we have lots of snow and cold weather and uh, People, especially kids playing hockey uh, outside on the streets. The legacy of this famous club can be felt throughout the world game. Around 30 former Dynamo players currently play in the NHL, players who began their careers at Dynamo's youth coaching centers. Uh, like most of, uh, most of the kids, I was playing hockey uh, next to my apartment. Just one day I, I was invited to play for uh, Dynamo Hockey School. That's uh, how I get uh, into hockey. With so many of this well-traveled squad having played in North America and throughout Europe, it's surprising that few have any experience of British ice hockey. Usually we go to somewhere around the Europe uh, for Christmas tournaments, but this year is uh, England for us and you know, it's a little surprise because we, we don't know a lot about uh, English hockey. We just know that uh, lots of Canadians play in the English Canadians and uh, usually it's Canadian style. So we would like to know more about this hockey and we're ready for it. British ice hockey is still quite young in terms of its development. The Ice Hockey Super League, the ISL, formed in 1996, has been a great success and attract crowds that compete in size with some second division football clubs. With first-class facilities in large, all-seater venues throughout the league, the ISL boasts some of the finest rinks in the world. Dynamo played their first match of the tour against the Nottingham Panthers on Boxing Day, before facing Sheffield Steelers the next day and then Manchester Storm on the 29th. Nottingham Panthers, with their lavish facilities at the National Ice Centre, are keen to promote the game through high-profile fixtures. 
We've got a, a build-up of games coming up, and uh, I think, you know, right now we're trying to win our, uh, our league games, but in the back of their minds, they know that they're up against one of the top teams in the world, and, uh, you know, every practice session, everybody's just working that little bit harder just to make sure that uh, on Boxing Day, we're ready for them. Uh, European hockey is quite offensive. Uh, it's fast skating. Uh, they've got the big ice surface as we do here, but uh, we play more of a North American style game, which has been known to be more physical. Uh, but I think times are changing. I think uh, even in Europe nowadays, uh, their players are getting bigger, they're getting stronger, so they're going to be playing a physical game as well, so it's going to be twice as hard. I think the guys want to have something to prove playing against a team of that caliber. You don't want to just go out and throw your stick on the ice and, and hope for the best. You want to prove to yourself what you can do. You're for sure going to see some nice playmaking. Uh, they don't uh, dump the puck in a lot. They like to hold on to it. They like to bring the puck back in their own end. They wait for their chances to score. All right, last one. With former Steelers player Paul Aidy now in charge, the Panthers have maintained a steady position in the Super League this season. So how will they fare against Russia's finest, the toughest opposition of their careers? Well, I think you've got to come up with a, a strategy to keep the puck out of the middle of the ice and try to keep it along the boards and force them out of their game plan. I mean, they'll be a very skilled team. They're going to want to move the puck quick, and we're going to have to play a very good defensive game to, to stay in the game with them. It'll be difficult, but, you know, we're certainly going to give it a, a, a great effort. The Russians travel to Sheffield for their next encounter on the 27th of December. After their incredible Grand Slam last season, winning the Super League, the Benson and Hedges Cup, and the Challenge Cup, the Steelers have had a mixed campaign up to now, and therefore have no doubts about the challenge they're facing. Their five skaters are all capable of scoring and they will attack at any time. And so you have to be aware that their defenders are just as strong offensively as, as, the, as their strikers, so to speak, if you put it in football terms. So they, everyone on the ice is capable of scoring a goal and they will, they will use that to their advantage. Unfortunately, we're not going to be at full strength. And when you're playing a, a team of that nature and they're going to come here with possibly 24, 26 guys, uh, it's virtually impossible to ask the guys to, to play at... Uh, you know, the, the pace that they're going to set for 60 minutes. We have very good goaltending and uh, we, have, we, have some, we have some good offensive players with a lot of NHL experience and uh, much like them, I think they have, uh, I think I saw Shalankov, I think their goaltender played in the NHL. So we're going to see two good goaltenders. Trying to get rid of his helmet, Nygaard's just grimacing. Those two just fall down and now Nygaard slams him to the ice. Canada and Russia have a real history of, uh, you know, really going at it uh, tooth and nail, so to speak, when they play each other internationally. And it's, uh, you know, it's always been a debate whether the Russians are better than the Canadian hockey players. And I think our, because our lineup is, is, is uh, more or less based on Canadian talent, there's going to be that factor. Uh, you know, it's, it's almost like, although we're representing the Sheffield Steelers, we're also in the back of our minds trying to show them that the Canadian hockey players are better than the Russians. Manchester Storm host Dynamo in the final game of the tour on Saturday the 29th of December at the Manchester Evening News Arena. Recently voted the finest indoor arena in Europe, the MEN's facilities have become synonymous with the high standards of spectator comfort in the ISL. Hosting the league's record attendance of 17,000, the MEN is home to some of the most fanatical fans in the country. Storm supporters and players were given an early experience of Russian ice hockey in August with a pre-season friendly against AK Bars. The 3-0 defeat for Storm was considered a good result when taking into account the circumstances. It was definitely one of the top teams I ever played against uh, and they came, they came in flying in, in a good form. They uh, had, I think, about 20 games under their belt with uh, large numbers. They had four full lines and uh, they played really well. A lot, a lot of skill. I think a lot of those guys, uh, younger guys, will have a chance to play in the National Hockey League. Uh, and uh, at the highest stage in uh, ice hockey. Uh, really, really quality side. Uh, a lot of the, the coaches uh, like to, to play very physical against the uh, European teams, but uh, sometimes that'll backfire against you and you'll take a lot of penalties. And these are teams you cannot uh, win against in the penalty box. They're very skilled, they have very good power plays, and they score a lot of goals. In hockey, it's similar to football. You need your goal scorers, you need your you know, your midfielders and your solid defenders and goaltending. And I think, you know, overall, we're pretty sound through the whole lineup. I mean, we have some really skilled guys, and 
and uh, we have some great guys that are great along the boards and penalty killers and and uh, you know offensive defensemen and, uh, and defensive defensemen and, and our goaltenders you know have been great all year. Well, back in '87, I played for the U.S. Uh, national junior team, and uh, back when it was still communist, <laughs> which was interesting. And uh, you know, we ended up playing against uh, Moscow there. You know, we just got our tails kicked. They're one of the best teams in the world. You know, one of the best teams in Europe. And uh, when you're coming up against a team like that, obviously. You know, you, you start thinking, holy smokes, we're, we're playing a very tough team. But uh, at the end of the day, it's, you know, it's a learning experience for us. Uh, it's a learning experience uh, for the coaches. And, you know, I think it's great. After the break, Nottingham faced Dynamo Moscow in the Panthers' lab. Interesting to see how we fare against the, the, the big boys from Russia. This program is sponsored by the GMB, Britain's general union. This program is sponsored by the GMB, Britain's General Union. Having arrived in England on Christmas Day, Russian ice hockey legends Dynamo Moscow travel to the National Ice Centre to battle it out with the Nottingham Panthers. Commentary from Andy Costigan. So the first puck is dropped and the 2001 tour of the UK by the mighty Moscow Dynamo is underway in the National Ice Centre in Nottingham. The blues and whites of Dynamo Moscow against the black and gold of the home side, the Nottingham Panthers. Puck is kicked clear by Brent Pope through the neutral zone. The Russians will have to go back to their own zone and they'll look to start an attack down the left wing. Immediately switched to the right side but the pass went astray and the Panthers will just send the puck in deep. Off his line is Mikhail Stolenkov as the Russian coaches look on from the bench. Here come the Russians up the middle. Down the left wing is Ivanov. Ivanov into the corner. We'll send it around the boards for Lapin. Lapin and Tereshenko. Russians looking to set it up. Lapin. Tereshenko on the goal line to the front of the net and there's Ivanov with an easy finish past Lorenz and that's 1-0 Dynamo Moscow. Lovely work, it's almost as though they're on a power play. The puck goes low and Tereshenko to the crease and Ivanov in space had plenty of time to beat Lorenz, totally unmolested, 1-0 to the Russians. Panthers coach Paul Aidy looking on somewhat nervously from the bench as the Russians mount another attack and it's picked off by Norris Norris with Weber in support and the Panthers working hard down the right wing Weber still working hard with the puck sends it around towards Nykar Nykar in the corner he's a tough man to move off the puck and he keeps hold of it brings it back to the point and in rushes Carlson, the Swedish defenceman. Carlson, can he move, bring it out around the net? Backhand shot, Norris. Weber's got space to turn, and the Panthers have tied it up. And look at the delight on the face of Randall Weber and the rest of the Panthers and their fans. That's 1 1. Carlson takes it around the net, and Weber will turn and beat Stolenkov, and the Dynamo Moscow goalie won't like that one little bit. 1-1 in the National Ice Centre and Stolenkov hangs his head. So into the second period now in the National Ice Centre. Nottingham Panthers 1, Dynamo Moscow 1 and not many would have given the Panthers a chance of that. But they're putting up a very brave performance against the weight of numbers on the Dynamo Moscow bench. 22 players the Russians have and they're beginning to pepper Daniel Lorenz. Another excellent save by the Panthers netminder. Shots beginning to rain in from all angles. Broken stick on the ice. Dynamo still in possession, but now it clears to the neutral zone. The Russian forwards will have to retreat before they can go back in. Passing the puck around. Puck possession is all part of the Russian game. Another shot just wide of the goal. More wood on the ice as another stick is broken. Russians come again. And the Panthers clear. Panthers director of hockey Alex Dampier looks on from the bench. Now a chance for the home side. Druin winds up the big shot just wide of the target. And this time it's the Russian coaching staff who look a little bit concerned. Back come Dynamo Moscow. 
Lorenz with another good save from Lapin. Fed back out to the slot. Russians queuing up for shots. And the Panthers somehow work it to the corner. Maloney. Maloney battling in the corner. Excellent work down low by Gribko. Drives to the net. Couldn't get the shot away, but he's there again. And eventually the Panthers will get it clear through the neutral zone. Looking for Poirier. And the Russians just seem to have an extra man all the time. Lorenz goes for a little skate and earns a, takes a well-earned breather. And as Kelly Carlson takes possession of the puck, that's the end of the scoreless second period. So the Panthers won. Dynamo Moscow won after 40 minutes. Stepanov into the left-wing corner. Get some help from Semenov. And Lorenz smothers that puck on the goal line. And that was a lucky escape for the Nottingham Panthers as the Russians worked it to the crease. Panthers players just giving Lorenz a tap on the pads to say well done. on the draw wins it straight back to the man at the point is Yudin big shot excellent glove save from Danny Lorenz super draw from Lapin and a one-timer from Yudin and Lorenz is earning his corn tonight with a string of impressive saves Lapin on the face off again Russians in control of the puck Yudin slid it across the face of the goal player goes down but manages to retain possession in the corner somehow it's fired around the boards Panthers can't clear it though eventually comes out into the neutral zone with Norris Norris has a bit of a hack at the Russian player in front of him but gets away with it now here come Dynamo again down the left side drop pass and it's to the net and it's in and Danny Lorenz is protesting that that puck was kicked in by Lapin but the goal will stand, the drop pass is fired in by Yudin and Lapin gets the redirection and Lorenz immediately protests that the puck was kicked but referee Hansen says no and that's 2-1 to Dynamo Moscow Panthers begin an attack down the right wing but it's broken up by the Russians again they're happy to send the puck back to their own zone Russians down the right wing now, moving the puck well amongst themselves. Quite happy to take it back into their own zone before starting the attack. Multiple passes, it's all about possession in the Russian game. Clearance takes a funny bounce, Norris to the net, Stolenkov couldn't hold it, and Jinman has tied it up at 2-2. And a strange bounce off the boards worked well for the Nottingham Panthers as Norris fired it to the net and Jinman capitalised on a mistake by Mikhail Stolenkov. And the Russian goalie won't want to watch this replay as Jinman milks the applause from the home fans and Norris gets an encouraging pat from his coach Paul Aidy. Norris just fires it to the net, Stolenkov appears to have it and somehow Jinman squirts it past him for a 2-2 scoreline. Russians from their own zone. Down the right wing. Work it into the corner. Back goes Pope. Backhand pass. Tries to clear it around the boards. Pass comes across to Tushinsky. Hits the pad in post. And Ivanov mops up the rebound for his second of the game. And the Russians are back in front. The shot from Tushinsky. Oh, look at the move by Yakibov. Steps over the pass, Trashinsky with a bullet off the pads and the post, and even off his in like Quicksilver to make it a 2 3 scoreline. Panthers from behind their own net. Savoy sends it in down the right wing. The Russians will bank it off the boards to the neutral zone. Nottingham Panthers not at all disgraced so far in this game. They trail 
three goals to two. But they've put up an excellent fight against the reigning Russian champions and the team currently third in the Russian Super League. Pope takes a long-range effort, steered wide by Stolenkov. Held in by the Panthers, Jinman. Jinman centering past Savoie all alone to the low side. Beats Stolenkov and would you believe it, it's 3-3. And I don't think even Claude Savoie can believe the space and time he had to take that pass from Jinman and bury it past Stolenko. 3-3 in the National Ice Centre. A tremendous performance by the Nottingham Panthers and they're getting the applause from the home fans. Aidy looks relaxed with his hands in his pockets. Forward come Dynamo Moscow again late in the game now with the scoreline tied at 3-3. Just dumped into the left wing corner. And there is the final hooter. Danny Lorenz gets a pat on the head from Jimmy Drolet and the rest of the Panthers players surround their goalie. Because he's had an excellent night's work against one of the most offensive teams in the whole of European hockey. Broad grins on the face of Barry Nyka and the rest of the Panthers players because they've had a tremendous evening against Dynamo Moscow. It's finished. The Nottingham Panthers 3, Dynamo Moscow 3. They are a team that uh, on paper should beat us, but <clears throat> I think with our crowd behind us in Sheffield and uh, you know the enthusiasm that we'll have for the game, then, then we can overcome that. Coming up after the break, Sheffield Steelers take on Dynamo Moscow at the Sheffield Arena. The crew's just starting to throw a few punches. He's grabbed David up. This programme is sponsored by the GMB, Britain's General Union. This programme is sponsored by the GMB, Britain's General Union. Good evening then and a very warm welcome to the Sheffield Arena where tonight we have some very special ice hockey action for you. The Sheffield Steelers face off against perhaps one of the best teams in Europe in Dynamo Moscow. So we're underway. Your referee this evening is Andy Carson. And immediately Moscow get the puck deep in their own zone. They play it forward trying to immediately go on the fly. Back just turns that one away. It goes deep into the corner. Allison tries to clear on that far side. Mansov's in there as well, but the puck breaks free. Comes near side, out in front. Breaks just towards this near corner and Cruz is there. Steelers need to get a hold of the puck. They can't quite manage it, and Paul Cruz will bring it away now. Near side, looks up, just tries to use some of his strength. He's hip-checked straight to the ice. He's not too impressed with that. Turns around, immediately throws the glove right up into the face. Moscow defenseman, Arikovsky. Well, that could well be sign of things to come, the open ice hitting. I don't think any of the penalty minutes in this game go towards league positions as Moscow drive the puck in. Good catch a save first up from Ryan Bach. But this could get very, very interesting. That was a nice piece of play by the Moscow side, that was Trashinsky. Bobic intercepts at centre ice and now Brown has it, plays it up towards Lipset on the stretch, goes in towards the zone but Yaramay May gets it forward and now Mas Moscow bring it away again through Ivanov, plays it down low, little move out in front but that's fired wide, Iv Ivanov wins it back on the boards but then the Steelers clear towards centre ice. Oh, nice passing deep in their own zone. Moscow bring it forward. Nice pass inside. Good save. Rebound comes out. Great save again by Ryan Back. He's starting to stand on his head early on, and that's what he's going to have to do if the Sheffield Steelers are going to be successful in this game. Gets it forward again to the far side of the ice. Brings it forward through Lapin, but Steelers have done well. They've got the body... On this Russian side, early doors as Cruz brings it into the zone. Top of the circle, he's got a man driving the net. That's Brad Lauer, deflected just over the top, but Lauer will muscle his way onto the puck on that far side. Cruz plays it round. Allison will get it behind the net. Just stops, banks it off the net, gets it down. Comes out in front. No Steelers home, but there's danger for them as the puck breaks towards 
this near side and into the zone. Oh, great hands as back. has got no chance here. Ooh, in fact, he managed to make the save. All the moves came from Stepanov. I thought he was going to deke all the way around Ryan back, but a good save in the end as Stepanov picks up the puck again. Steelers collide into one another. Paul Cruz just gets a little feisty again as Lappin's pinned into the boards. Allison's back there. Nice move by him, but he can't clear the zone. The puck's fired in again. Good save, Ryan back. If the Steelers are to do well in this game, you can say it's a friendly if you like, but it's not very friendly out there at the moment. There's certainly a few checks and a few sticks and a few gloves flying. 12.34 remaining in this first period. It's a Steelers nil. Dynamo Moscow nil. Far side of the ice towards Semenov. He gets it forward and the Steelers have done well just to hold the men up and it looks like uh, Semenov will pick it up in the corner again. He gets it inside. Yudikov. And immediately we're getting a little bit of slashing on the bench. Peter Le Boutillier is screaming for the gentleman to come off the bench. That's the number 21 who just took his stick and started slashing Le Boutillier right to the side of his shoulder and the top of his head as well. Which and obviously something must have gone off between the two players on the ice behind the play. I think probably the slashing to the upper body was a little uncalled for. Well, here's the official call then. Peter Laboutillier's got a 2 plus 2 plus 10 for attempted spearing. And Savchenko got a 5 plus game for elbows. Well, that's the most wooden aluminium elbows I've ever seen in my life. We're getting a visual demonstration as to as to what exactly Peter Laboutillier did from one of the Russian coaches. Well, they think it was a spear, a definite spear, and an, an attempt to injure. And Andy Carson is explaining it was an attempt to injure because he missed him. But a penalty is going to be served by the number 36. Ivanov out in front, but Sebastian gets there first. And Ivanov wins the puck on that far side. He's under pressure from Allison. Ivanov with the pass, and the puck goes into the back of the net. A great finish. A lovely bang-bang play by Dynamo Moscow, and that's what they're all about. Ivanov with the hard work on the boards to take the puck past Scott Allison, and then he fed the lovely pass out in front towards Tereschenko, and Tereschenko with a one-timer to go past Ryan back. 13.41 on the clock then, it's the Steelers nil. Dynamo Moscow won. Mansov got Cruz on the far side of the ice, if you can see him. Goes all the way down, he's held up at the blue line, gets it towards Mordi. Then Cruz wins the puck, he's got Mansov high in the slot. Puck comes out in front and there's a couple fighting out there on the ice. Ron Shooter takes his man into the back of the net. Paul Cruz gets involved as well. And Shooter has got his man all the way down there on the ice. Cruz has got a man down there on the ice. And Cruz is going to stand up, he's going to give him some. Shooter has pretty much tied up his man. Cruz has tied up his man as well. I think the last time Ron Shooter had a fight was probably against the Solihull Barons back in about 1991. Back to the point. Comes towards the number 16. Scott Pintaya fires it in and this puck's gone into the back of the net. Ryan Back is absolutely frustrated with that. I think the puck took a little deflection out in front and went all the way past Ryan Back. Another stick shattered out there on the ice. And we'll wait for the official announcement on the goal as we're going to see Ryan Back possibly replaced here. He's thoroughly frustrated. Scott Allison dares go and tap him on the pads. The goal will be credited to Alexander Najivi. Oh, well, they've decided to give it to Alexander Kavalin. He's got a puck now. Steelers get in there. Good check on him by Scott Allison. Absolutely rocked Kavalin's world. But Moscow still having another 35 seconds or so on that far side of the ice. Down low, puck comes back, fired in just wide of the net. Kvaldin with another chance on the doorstep, and Yell clears it. And back just hangs on to the puck. It's flicked all the way around this near side boards. Good work by Allison. 
Ivanov wins it back. Danger for the Steelers, though, as the man comes inside. Great play, and then Ivanov put the finish on. Looked like Cruz had just stolen the puck, and then Ivanov won it back. Fired right past McInerney. Four minutes and two seconds remaining. Moscow have made it three. It's the Steelers nil. Dynamo Moscow three. Davidov, the defenseman, brings it clear. He's got a lot of space. He takes a little slice, then fires a little wrist to it. Immediately, it's going to break towards a Moscow stick. Then it comes back, fired all the way across, right on the doorstep. No chance in the end for Kavaldin. The Steelers clear it all the way down the ice. Allison's got it. He's all alone. Allison shoots top corner. Lovely finish by Scott Allison. A great outlet pass. And the Moscow shuts out his broken through big Scotty Allison, the Steelers' top goal scorer. 13 minutes and seven seconds remaining. It's the Steelers one. Dynamo Moscow three. Dumped in. Near side into the zone they come. Shot fired right through the five hole. And a lovely finish in the end. Dynamo Moscow through their number 35, Dennis Kartsev. 11.51 remaining, it's Dynamo Moscow 4, the Sheffield Steelers 1. And now there's trouble as there's a 3 on 1 developing for Moscow. This near side snapped in, rebound comes out. Steelers need to clear this puck, it just breaks me on the back of the net, and then Paul Cruz loses out. Puck again, top corner. That was a beautiful, beautiful shot. The puck broke all the way out in front and the finish from Kudashev. But it top shelf with a bullet of a shot. Tipped wide by Cruz, Cruz is taken down. He stops, he just turns and gets his man. And Cruz is going to go after him. And Cruz just starting to throw a few punches. He's grabbed Davidov. And Davidov really doesn't want to be there. He's just trying to grab onto Paul Cruz. And Paul Cruz... Owen McInerney's calling out the goaltender. This could go here. McInerney's called his man. And Cruz is still throwing bombs. Dumped off to Rick Brabant. Brabant brings it into the zone. He's all on his own. Still Rick Brabant. Oh, that would have been one of the goals of the season had it gone in. And that'll do it pretty much for the game. As Allison makes the final hit right on the hooter. A convincing performance from the Russian side. Who at times were outstanding with their skating and the passing. The Steelers tried hard, but with a far shorter bench. After the break, Manchester Storm versus Dynamo Moscow from the magnificent Manchester Evening News Arena. This programme is sponsored by the GMB, Britain's General Union. This programme is sponsored by the GMB, Britain's General Union. Mori Hansen has dropped the puck and we're underway between two teams on this special Christmas visit to the UK of Dynamo Moscow. It's game three of their three-game tour of the UK. They've drawn 3-3 with the Nottingham Panthers. They've beaten the Sheffield Steelers 5-1 and now they renew acquaintances with the Manchester Storm, these two teams having met in the European Hockey League back in 1997. Russ Romanuk is renewing acquaintances with Dynamo Moscow after an 11 year gap. Just after he turned professional and signed with the Winnipeg Jets, Russ Romanuk spent a month in Moscow training with the Blues and Whites. And Mikhail Stolenkov, the Dynamo goalie, makes the first save. Another shot came in on Mike Torture, but he steered that cleared off his pads. Storm now through the neutral zone. Send it into Dinamo territory. The blue and white shirts get it clear. Kale Short loses his footing but picks himself back up. And there's the first goal for Dinamo Moscow. They gained the puck around the net, worked it back to the front. And Alexei Kudashov it was who makes it Manchester Storm nil. Dynamo Nosco won. Just over 10 minutes gone on this first period. Manchester Storm nil. 
Dynamo Moscow 1. The goal at 6 minutes 14. Came from Alexander Savchenkov. Russians again with possession deep in the storm zone. Pass came back to the blue line, but it was too strong and badly directed. So back to their own zone with Vyshenkovic. Pass off the boards up the left wing. It's intended for Tereshenko. The Russians pick the puck off again in the neutral zone. Vyshenkovic, drop pass for Ivanov. Stick save by Mike Torture. And Ivanov strips the puck away from Joe Basillo, takes it around behind the net and slides it through the legs of Mike Torture. Individual effort from number 10, Mikhail Ivanov. And you can't give these Russian players the space and time in which to make a play like that. And Dynamo Moscow lead 2 0. Alexander Yudin will start the Next attack with a long pass to Lapin. Wrist shot and Lapin mops up the rebound as it came back off the pad of Mike Torture. And in quick succession, Dynamo Moscow have stretched the lead to 3 0. Lapin on the rebound. And things not looking good for the Manchester Storm. Face off against Ravel Yakubov. Trevor Galant, who's been suffering with flu the last couple of days. But the chance to play against a team of this quality was too good an opportunity to pass up. Even off. Skopintsev spins and takes a shot and that's deflected in off the stick of his opposite number, Rob Wilson. Skopintsev will be credited with the goal and Rob Wilson and Mike Torture will be very disappointed at having conceded a goal in such a manner, but no own goals in ice hockey. Just over three minutes left on this first period. Storm looking to get forward. Gallant tries to burst his way through two defencemen and does so. But the puck will come free in the corner and the Russian team will work it around to the far side. And now they'll play it off the boards. Davidoff down by Nikovsky. He lost possession. Back from the storm. A backhand pass from Gallant to the left wing, but there was nobody there for him. But he's back in possession of the puck. He brings it back, tries the backhand shot. That was deflected high and wide. Held in at the blue line. Now can the storm force something now? Mike Morin. Back to the slot. Wilson was trying to get the shot away. Just one pace too many for him. Wilson again in the neutral zone as the Storm clear the offensive zone and get back in with Morin. Morin around the net. Shot was wide of the target. Davidov just holds on to the puck, looking for the right pass. Excellent stick handling skills by the men in blue and white. Davidov winds up the shot. Pad saved by Torch and he gathers it in. So Dynamo Moscow with the first power play opportunity of the game. And with a four goal lead, they might not be tempted to push too hard. Mike Torch with the clearance, doesn't clear the zone though. Now the Russian team Player loses his edge behind the goal. Ironic cheers from the Storm fans. 33 is Zolotov. Roman Zolotov backhands it into the Storm zone. Gloved out of the air by Dwight Parrish. And easily cleared the length of the ice. No ice in the course. Storm short-handed. 
Davidov found Savchenko, who immediately played it to the left wing. Man back at the point is Yudin. It's taken down low, back to the top of the circle. Big shot. Oh, and what a stunning shot it was indeed. And that's 5 0, a power play goal. His second of the game, Alexander Savchenkov. Galant in the corner, feeds it back to the top of the circle for Roman up through the legs. And the shot was blocked. It was Rob Wilson, it was. And back come Dynamo Moscow immediately, and it's 6 0. A super finish in from the blue line was Kudashov. And he put it to the glove side and gave Mike Torchia no chance. Storm on their second power play. Wilson lifts it high into the zone. Romanuk finds Gallant. Gallant to Bulgy in the corner. Man back at the point was Paris. Paris sends it down low for Gallant. Gallant to the net and the scoreboard. And that brings the biggest cheer of the night. A power play strike for the Manchester Storm. And it's Russ Romanuk with a goal against the club that he trained with as a youngster. He got to the net and deflected the pass from Tevagalan, past Yedemeyev, to make it a 1-6 scoreline. Finds Dan Preston. Preston's pass for Basilo was too strong. Basilo will go on the chase against Marat Davidov and wins it. Cardarelli. Shot on the turn, another super save low to his left hand side by Yeremeyev. And he's certainly the busier netminder at the start of this third period. Odakovsky. Lovely pirouette in the neutral zone. again now Gallant Gallant just checks back as he gets to the top of the circle to the slot for Wilson ripped up Yeremeyev with the save and that just shows no goal the Russians were claiming a goal they turned away with sticks held out Allard is in and it's gone Manchester Storm. Dynamo Moscow thought they'd gone second one up, and the Storm hit back, and Pierre Allard beat Yeremeyev low to the glove side to make it a 6 2 scoreline. And the home fans enjoyed that one. Cardarelli back to Preston. Comes back to Cardarelli, gets to the hash marks, takes the shot, good save by Yeremeyev again. Stevie Lyle with a good pass. Preston sends it in deep. Miller with the one timer, blocked on the way through. And Dinamo bring it clear. Stevie Lyle finds Dan Preston. A minute gone on this Storm power play opportunity. Five and a half minutes remaining on the game. Manchester Storm two, Dynamo Moscow six. But the Storm far from disgraced. Gallant. Roman up to the net. Gallant. Yeah! game and there is the final hooter the Christmas tour of the UK for Dinamo Moscow comes to an end with another victory by six goals to three over the Manchester Storm well, Vitaly Yeremeyev gets the congratulations from his teammates
and a Manchester Storm can look proudly upon their performance tonight because at one time when it looked like a cricket score was on the cards they dug in and fought back and a very brave third period saw them take the third session by two goals to nil and to make a respectable scoreline of Manchester Storm 3, Dinamo Moscow 6. With the tour completed, Dynamo's 35-strong team of players and coaches return to Heathrow Airport for their flight home. Two victories and a draw have reaffirmed their superiority, but the British teams have certainly given it their best slap shot and kept their pride firmly intact. We were never going to stay with them for 60 minutes. We were. We always had a chance if the game was 20 minutes long, but that's not ice hockey, is it? Actually, it's good for us. It's uh, lots of tough games. I mean, tough situation in the game, so sometimes you need to feel it, like for body and for players, and like uh, it's a good for team to to feel like uh, good collective in the team. You know, it's very good for us. Most of all, Dynamo have left British ice hockey fans with some memorable moments from three memorable games.